Hey everyone, Cody Decker here. Um, we showed a few other examples earlier. Um, if you have or have not seen them, make sure to go check them out. Um, where we had used Apache NetBeans to use the console to display the outputs of an application. Um, and another one that we had used, we actually used a different IDE known as Visual Studio. This is actually using Apache NetBeans, like the first project with the dice. Um, but instead of using the console for output, we're using something called JFrame technology, which uh, is something that's embedded into Apache NetBeans as a feature um, that just creates an enhanced UI for the user to use. Um, so that's what this is using here. I just wanted to go ahead and just show you the application real quick and just kind of show you what the core functionality does um, from a user's perspective so you understand that well. And then we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and just jump into the code and take a look and see what's happening. So. We were asked to create an application based on a problem that we see in real life that doesn't work very well and something that would potentially be able to fix it. Um, for grading cards, like sports cards in this world, um, there's not really, we, there's not a ton of different services that you can grade cards and preserve the, uh, the value of those. Um, there's one called Beckett grading services. There's one called PSA. Um, a pretty, the pretty common one is to use PSA, um, but there's there's a lot of issues with getting those cards graded, and once when they do get graded, it's hard to get a hold of customer service. Um, there's not really an easy way of doing it. There's one eight hundred number, but you can you can wait multiple days before you even hear a call back. Um, it's it's a pretty horrible horrible process. Um, so I created just a basic customer feedback form for PSA um, that just allows them to formally take in responses and then send those back to the user. So it's just a, just a basic feedback form. Um, you'll see things in asterisks where if it's a required field, you know, it's gonna prompt the user to enter those fields in for um, they continue. So if I just hit submit, let's just see what happens. Um, it's going to prompt the user for, you know, some, some required fields. So if I just put in test here and hit submit, um, it's going to want an email, so it's going to keep prompting me to provide everything. So if I just say test at test.com, and let's just go ahead and fill it all in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, phone number's not required. I'll put one in. And reason for inquiry, feedback, question about order or other. So let's just say question about an order. Um, Obviously, order number is not required because if it's not a question about an order, you're not going to have an order number. So there's there's some logic behind the scenes that happens. Um, if I hit clear, it'll remove all the fields. If I hit submit, we're going to go ahead and see a few things. It actually captures the current date and the current time. It's currently 2.59 p.m. here on 2.26, 2022. Um, and then it's just going to display all that information back to you just to, just to relay that they've captured your information. Um, if I hit exit, it's going to close the application. So let's take a look at the code and see what's happening here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and run it again, just so we can reference this as we look through it. So a few things happens here. When we use JFrame, we actually have a different um, layout as far as the code we have something called design view which is going to allow us to you know click and drag fields move them around set them however we want and then we have something called source um, similar to visual studio code um, you can set names for all these properties these labels these text boxes drop down boxes and then you can take that name and reference it in your code and that's how the connection is made between the code and the name um, so I, I imported a few things here a date date format and symbol date format. Um, just some things I needed to in order to get the date to format the way I wanted it to. You see we're using JFrame. Um, and then this is just called feedbackform.java. So within this code, we capture the text from the first name, last name, order number, email, phone number, message, and inquiry. Um, so the green is referencing the label made on the design view, so whatever the name was set for each label. So saying, you know, these labels get the text, get the text, get the text, because we know that 
this is not a text. This is actually something called a combo box. Um, we actually say combo box, I guess, selected item, then convert it into a string. Um, so a little bit different there for the box, the combo box. All right. Um, here is where we are going to display all the information that comes back. So we're going to display a string says hello, grab that first name, last name. Um, we're going to create a new date object, which will be today's date. And then we format that date just like this. Um, and you can provide the formatting of that date. Um, it recognizes capital M's as the month, lowercase d is the day, lowercase y's as the years, and then hours, minutes, all that good stuff. And then we go ahead and format today's date with that simple date format, which I just named DF. Um, we just have some more text that's just displaying, you know, hard-coded strings with a combination of those and the values of some of the fields that we have provided. And here is a method that I had called called perform error handling. So in the scenarios where, you know, if the user clicks submit and these asterisks are not filled out. Um, you know, we need we need to create error handling conditions to handle those to prevent the user from actually continuing with the logic and submitting if they haven't done it, done the proper steps. Um, so inside of this, you'll see a few empty methods here because nothing needed to be done specifically for these. Um, J button to action performed. Um, this is just a button that is actually taking every single one of these specific text fields and clearing them out, it's just setting them to empty strings. And we can take a guess, is it going to be submit, exit, or clear? That's going to clear out all the fields into empty strings. Um, so if I just put some text in here, you'll see this J button to action perform method on the clear button, clear out all the fields. So that's that code being executed right there. Um, J button action three just says system exit. Um, if, I, if I click exit, closes the application, so that's that line being ran there. It's just a simple command. Um, then within our main method, um, we're doing a few things here. We're actually just going to go ahead and run the application and set the visible to true, which means that the whole box becomes visible. Um, this is our, these are our error handling scenarios, so um, anytime one of these fields is not entered that should be entered. We're going to set one of the labels to an error message box, which I just have it set to JLabel15. That's just the order of the label that I made that was in that spot. Um, clear out all the other fields. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you what exactly that's doing. So you can't see it, but there's actually about probably around 10 labels here that are hidden. They're just all empty strings. So if I put in A, just for the sake of time, just put in A's for these. Feedback and I hit submit. So all these labels are actually given values here. Um, so we just set the value of whatever is in this first line to an error message, which you'll see here. And then we clear out all the other ones that you just saw that were below that line. So that's what that's doing right there. Is it's just clearing out all these other labels and setting just a hard-coded value um, and just checking if each one of these values that was passed into this perform error handling is empty. So if the first name's empty, display this message, clear out all these fields. If last name's empty, display this message, clear out all these fields, and so forth. It's pretty repetitive. Um, so no actual technical math is being done in this application, but it's just a good example of you know how error handling can be used um, to prevent the user from you know misentering information or entering something that they shouldn't be entering. Um, just makes a more well-rounded application. So that's about it for this application. Thank you for your time and have a good one.